global happenings today. We communicate. We analyze global news. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our channel. Some few hours ago, one of the ministers of um, Tinubu's government, I'm talking about Omahi, uh, the former governor of Ebonyan State, had an interactive session with the aggrieved uh, persons. Don't forget that's actually the one in charge of the Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway, uh, which, of course, many lands have been destroyed, many homes have been taken away, acres of land, and they all came together. Of course, so many things were discussed. I won't want to take the cat out of the bag, but I want to let you watch the video. He yeah, some of the very strong statements as uh, some of the women, some of the aggrieved members put it to him, put it to uh, David, David Dumahe that actually uh, they are doing things that are totally out of course. The shocking part is the point where an APC woman leader is the most affected. My goodness, you need to see her reaction. It's as if they took her breath away. Let's watch the video. My colleague is in the house to come back for more analysis on this. Yes, thank you very much, Honorable Minister, for your time. I want to find out your technical reason of avoiding the gazetted route. You told us your technical reason of avoiding the shoreline. You said there are cables there. Which, so, uh, which uh, as kilometer 16 or 17, one of the Aja, that we are all talking about. That is what I've been. Uh, you said your te excuse me, please. You said your technical reason of avoiding is because of the shoreline there, right? That, no, no, no because shoreline. of their cables. Take, on, yes. take, take it easy now. We are not quarreling. I'm calling with you, sir. I'm sorry. <laughs> My apologies. Yeah. Please. You said your technical reason yes. for avoiding the shoreline yes. at Okwaja yes. is because there are cables there. Yes. Which I'm not sure there are cables there. I want you to do your own work very well. There are no cables there. I am very, very sure. I'm a citizen of Okwaja and I know about all that place. Then Thank you. What are your technical reasons of avoiding the gazetted routes? At which location? The same place I'm talking about, the Okwaja. We have a gazetted route at Okwaja already. That's the Lagos State, which was signed by Tinubu in 206. The gazetted... So why are you avoiding? Because we were told that a lot of your people are there. That is why you are avoiding that route. So what is your technical reason of avoiding the, uh, the gazetted route and coming to meet us? That we have legal sea of us. We have all our documents. Why are you coming to us? Thank you. <laughs> if I have offended you, my apologies. The, it's very simple. We have uh, cables of MTN. They give us in writing. They showed us in writing. We had five meetings with them. They also wrote a petition to Mr. President. Listen to me. I want to warn you publicly. You have been doing a lot to stop the project. You are my sister. If I get, if I, if I get, if, listen to me. If I get further disturbances there, there will be consequences for it. We are following the law. You can go to court if we infringe on your rights. But please don't take law into your hands. Stop organizing protests. Stop organizing people to stop the work. I, I, I plead with you. Next question, please. Madam, we have a... Uh, we 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 can, you, can you render our mic to us? I cannot... Security. I can go Move her out. Madam, give us, give yourself respect. Okay, it's okay, it's okay. The, the way I, uh, this is my, I have a petron in Tinubu campaign of the That has over 5,000. Madam, yes. I know Excellency, only, I know only members of uh, the National Assembly. Madam, Your Majesties, ladies and gentlemen, um, good afternoon, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, um, please, the Honorable Minister, you... the Honorable Minister has respected all of us. Um, Madam, ladies and gentlemen. Madam, you are insulting us. Uh, ladies, you are insulting us. Madam, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you know, the, when the Honorable Minister stands before you here, he has respected all of us. The, I explain again and again that the place that Madam is shouting on us, 
is still within the coastal, you know, right of way of federal government. It is 120 meters. Our right of way is 250 meters. That notwithstanding, it is more advantageous to go by the coastline. But we can't go by the coastline for overriding public interest. We can't destroy the African, uh, you know, uh, is it African yeah, distant uh, network. We cannot destroy the, um, the MTN, you know, line. We have no interest than uh, this. And it's the duty of Mr. President to protect the strategic infrastructure of the federal government. For the madam that said, I came to the point, I said they should do this. I can't remember. All right, welcome back. My colleague is in the house. You heard what they said. Firstly, the young lady, the, the mother, the new mother that just gave birth, talked about the fact that they have the CFOs, uh, they have the lands have been gazetted, they had everything, they bought their lands properly. In fact, it was still done by during the time I reigned Obola Metinu as the governor, but now times have changed. And he was putting it to uh, uh, David Dumahi, the Minister of Works, that the places that they were supposed to, that was gazetted for such, were bought by their cronies, their allies. But they left the illegal people to come for them that are legal. And the reaction of the uh, woman leader, Petron, APC Petron, she even brought her, her, her awards that she has won several supporting Bola Metunubu. And she seemed to be the worst hit. She was literally crying, destroying the whole, scattering the whole place, such that even Umahi was insisting that security bundle her out of the place. What's your take? I would say the most touching of it all was the fact that a woman who is a supporter of Bola Metinibu was unfortunately also a victim of the economic policy of this administration. And that is that is uh, kind of bringing to reality the that word that what goes around comes around. When they do it to other people, it seems as if it's very okay. But don't forget that someday it will get to your own turn. You understand? Look at how she was screaming and shouting. What would it have taken if we had together come up together and make a better decision when it comes to the issue of choosing who will run the face of Nigeria? Someone who will be empathic enough. I know that the government has a plan of uh, compensating them with as much as 18 billion naira. But the big question is how much people have been affected by this considering the cost of living. Did the government also include the cost of living in their calculation because unfortunately for some who have as little as as half plot or one plot of land some of them will walk away even despite the lofty house that they might may have built there some of them will walk away with as little as five hundred thousand some will walk away with one million naira imagine the situation of things in the country right now and all of that is happening to you it it, it will break your heart now that that is when and i think at this point Nigerians need to realize that if we are bringing in anyone, the person must be empathic enough, you know, to help Nigeria change the course of our economy. This project, as much as it considered to be very economical, uh, is one of the major infrastructural moves by the current administration. But can we ask some very valid questions? If it happens that the president cannot successfully get into office in the name after 2027, is there any assurance that this project will be continued? So if it's not continued, it means that the, those monies have been wasted. Let's go back to the railway project that uh, Rotomi Amechi was doing for Nigeria. Currently, are those railway projects still viable? Are they still bringing in money? Imagine the one that they did from wherever they did down to Niger. Are we still enjoying the transportation at can, are, are, are people still using it to transport their goods and all of that? I think that at this point, Nigeria should be more concerned with the president who, when he comes on board, he will be more people-oriented than this issue of white elephant project, which I know as much as it's going to, the claim is going to change the narrative of the country when it comes to the issue of networking, road networking. But I know that topmost on the parity is a way of making some monies into their pocket. Now, imagine how this things have been handled and you know unfortunately though we know that there's an existence of an act 
far back 1978 that all land belongs to the government but it's important for us to realize that some people invested into all of this land and their most have been able to cut down on the level of uh, uh, accommodation problem that had existed thus far now for you to handle the situation in such a way that they don't even have food to eat some people that's their only hope imagine the other woman who was complaining that the husband left as much as 11 acres of land but today she doesn't even have any they want to like take down everything so all of these are some of the things that nigerians should be thinking of before we start voting people into power that woman who voted for apc she has learned and unfortunately she has learned the hard way I don't know how she will feel after now. Some people, this may be the end of their you know, future in Nigeria. So, so some, and, and guess what? There are moves that we are taking today, as much as it's going to enrich the pocket of those at the topmost level in government. But it's also a message sent across to intending investors that this is not the place to invest in. Because imagine in those places that they are pushing in and saying that people who may have sunk in some reasonable amount of money to set up a factory in those environments, and all of a sudden the thing just sweep through and clean up everything. Some of them have some bank loans to pay. You know, they collected money from the bank, they got the land and got the sea of wood. There is nothing heartbreaking like getting a sea of wood for a land. And all of a sudden you look at your sea of wood, it turns out to be a paper. It would have been better that there was flood and it washed it away than for you to hold it. And once upon a time, you show your child, we had a see This land actually belonged to us, but today it's nothing to run about. How would that encourage in Nigeria, even young investors? That's why we are seeing people investing in Bitcoin. Though it looks as though nobody, uh, it, it cannot be regulated and all of that. But most people prefer it because it has stayed for a long while without any form of interference from Nigerian government. Because that's one of the things that troubles most people. Some of these guys, some people are even scared of even keeping their monies in the bank. Because one day, one so-called president may wake up who had gotten uh, some some hard drink somewhere and decide confiscate any 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 bank account that is up to one million and confiscate it. Bring out twenty five percent. All of them must give government twenty five percent. What will you do? These things are not obtainable in other countries. So that's why we are seeing people but we are, are not there yet. We are not there yet, but they, they, they are traces. They will not be there. They are already provable traces pointing to the, that, that direction that we are heading there anytime soon. Now, if we, if we are doing this thing, calculative uh, investors, portfolio managers, calculative ones, as they look at it and say, ah, 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 this is not the right place to do any form of investment. Nigerians should wake up. The, the government should understand that democracy is more of the people than just setting up infrastructure that you're not even certain that it will change the narrative. Let's forget about when I was in government, I was the one that built this road. When I was in government, I was the one that built. Okay, currently we have an issue on ground, which is the road leading from that Lagos to Calabar. Those, that road is a lot of, it needs high level of repairs. Why don't we consider that and instead invest this money in agriculture? Not in part of the arable lands. This guy has been talking about this rally. Arable lands everywhere. Does it mean that it's just oil, oil that will keep exporting? Why don't we get to a point whereby we are the whole, we, we, we become one of the biggest exporters of, 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 of tomatoes, biggest of, of cocoa and all of that. Why don't we get to that level? That is what will create the change that we are looking for. That is what will bring back the value of our Naira, that export. But we are not even thinking, we are busy building road, building this, building this. Who will be working on those roads? Or possibly it's just the rich alone that will work. Very soon they will get tired of it with time. I think that's where I will just leave it. All right, let's go wrap it up. Let's meet in our comment section. What's your take? I, I honestly hope that um, uh, there will be more surety in our investment. Let's meet in our comment